Hi, I'm Lindsay Herman from Cake and Commerce, and today I'm going to show you how to make a gluten-free apple pie. Uh, the filling is really simple. We just have a quarter cup of sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, and two tablespoons of tapioca. Um, I've already gone ahead and sliced up some apples. I think, you know, slicing, just peel your apples. I, I'm not a big fan of peels in my apples. Peel the apples. Um, I tossed it with a little bit of lemon juice to prevent it from browning, about a tablespoon. And uh, in total, I cut up about six or seven apples. I used a mixture of apples because some of them are a little too firm when you bake them and some of them are a little more mushy. So I have um, Cortland's and Paula's in this mix, um, about half and half. So first thing I'm gonna do, just sort of stir up my sugar with my uh, tapioca. It, because it's not a ton of tapioca, you're not gonna get like a weird gloopy, starchy thing going on. This is just gonna help hold everything together. Um, we're gonna add that in. I also have some vanilla, but I'm going to wait until I get the apples coated before I, I put that in. So we just want to make sure the apples get coated. This is going to help them give off some liquid um, and also get some of the sugar dissolving. Oops. I'll throw in my vanilla. Now you can add other spices into your apple pie. I'm not a big fan of, of super seasoned apple pies, but if you like them, go ahead, add nuts, add berries, add whatever you like into your apple pie. I just, I like it really simple. So I'm just gonna let these sit for a bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pull out my tart dough and roll it out and put it in my, my pie pan and, and get it ready to go. So my pie crust has been sitting for at least 20 minutes in the refrigerator. Um, I rolled it out to about, I don't know, somewhere between a sixth and an eighth of an inch. Now, I don't have any pie pans at home, so I use a saute pan. Any saute pan will work for this recipe. The nice thing about this dough is it's so buttery and so rich that it will come out, even, even out of this thing with three little dinghies in it. It just, it still comes out. And it's kind of fun to use. You don't need any specialized equipment. And as long as you remember that the handle is really hot, it's a great pan to use as a substitute. So, first thing I do is I place, I leave this on the paper and I just flip it over. It's okay if you get some breakage. Um, it's really easy to repair this dough. So we're just going to press it in. We're going to try to keep overhang on here because we need to crimp the edges once we get our apples in. Um, and sometimes this, this is fairly brittle dough, so sometimes there is breakage. Don't worry about it. It will work out. Okay, so this is going to be sort of ugly-ish, but I promise you it will, it will look good in the end. Make sure it's coming off okay. All right, and like I said, um, you will get breakage, but as long as you've got some dough still on the edges, you are good. So our apples have been sitting for about 20 minutes now. They've given off some juice, and we're just gonna pour as much of this that fills in as we can. You know, I like a nice overstuffed looking apple pie. Let's get our liquid in. These are going to cook down a bit, so that's okay. And now we take the other piece of dough that we've rolled out. Same thing, flip it over. We're going to go over the top. And instead of pressing it onto the apple pie. We're going to press it onto the edges because that's where we want a little adhesion. Again, it's not going to be beautiful, but we're going to get it to work. Make sure we go all around the edge. Okay. And then we lift it off. And like I said, not gorgeous, but it's okay. We're going to fold over the edge.
So before I, I do anything decorative to the edges, um, I just want to make sure that they're totally stuck to each other and not going over the side. And because this is gluten-free, you really aren't going to get the same kind of stretching um, and shrinkage that you get with regular pie doughs. So you can just do a little crimp all along the sides. You don't have to worry that it's going to pull in too much because it won't. If you like to use a fork instead, you can do that too. Um, that makes for a nice decorative, homey looking edge. This is just the habit I'm in, doing this kind of crimp. Okay, and then we want to give it some vent. We, since there's gonna be a lot of steam given off, um, we wanna sort of direct where the steam is gonna go. We're gonna just cut a little hole out of the top. If you like to do a decorative one, please, by all means, go decorative. The last thing we do before we put it in the oven is just give it a little brush um, with some water and a little granulated sugar. Now, feel free to use an egg wash. Um, I'm not using eggs at all in this recipe, so I'm not gonna put any on the, on the wash and I'm sort of keeping it simple this way. But if you like it a little more richer and a little glossier, go for the egg. So we're gonna put it into the oven about 350 degrees for up to an hour. Um, this crust is going to get nice and golden and um, the, we'll know it's done because the juices will just start coming out over the sides and, and we'll be very clearly a little thickened up. So let's pop it in the oven now. After 45 minutes in the oven, I've pulled my gluten-free apple pie out. It smells great, it looks great. I can't wait to dig in. Enjoy.